I mean, I got some big testimony. I mean, I got some big testimony. What God can do, amen? amen. I mean, over the highways and byways, yeah. through a tornado, yeah. I came back safe and sound. Yeah. Yeah. 1,500 miles. God has been good to me. Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 12, and then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, we're going to be flipping over to after we read Matthew chapter 7. If I were to put a title on today's message, I want to thank first and foremost uh, the congregation and the ministers and evangelists that was left here to keep the work going and special thanks to our minister West who brought the word and a blessing to him and his family, amen? And I, I don't need to worry about community revival and outreach ministry. Amen? Because I trust the Lord for all things. And even though I was not able to go to any church, I mean, from Shirley Caesar Church right down to Bishop White, Bishop Winston, Bishop Wooten Church, all these churches were shut down Sunday morning. And these people have anywhere from 350 on their congregation to 5,000. And Raleigh was in the dark. But thank God for the light. Amen. And on that Sunday morning, we were able to have church service right in my mama yard. Evangelist Watkins brought the word. Amen. We had some good old uh, Bojangle chicken <laughs> with some sweet iced tea. And I mean, we ate like kings and queens. Amen? <laughs> One of my neighbor, mama neighbors came down and she said, I saw the truck in the yard. And then she, she looked real pitiful, and I asked her, you want any Bojangle? And she said, I, 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 yeah, give me a piece. <laughs> and she wound up eating about four or five pieces and eating biscuits and drinking half of the tea. I'm going to leave y'all alone. God bless Velma, amen? It so happened that her father and my mother's in the same uh, 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 the nursing home, the assistant living home, they're both in the same home and they're only a room apart from each other. Amen. And praise God, my mama is doing extremely well. Amen. About 75%. You can't pull the wool over even though they say part of her mind is gone. I say, mama, you ain't the only one. Part of my mind be gone too sometimes. <laughs> you know when your mind gone when you go to call one child and you call about three or four other names and then and then they tell you, they ain't me, that's, that's, that's them. That's what they, I'm talking to you anyway. <laughs> All right, in Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 1, uh, 12, uh, we're going to be reading here. If I were to put a title on today's message, I say, Prayer, Pain, and Perseverance. Look at somebody and say, Prayer, Prayer. Pain, Pain, and Perseverance. Now, it doesn't matter which way I call it today, you can get through what you're going through. Look at somebody and put your hand on them and touch them and say, whatever you're going through, you can get through it. Amen? I don't care what it is. The aftermath of a tornado is devastating. But with prayer, you can get through it. There may be some pain. But you can persevere. And many of us have tornadoes in our life. Many times we're going through something, and unlike a tornado, it is a violent whirlwind. It is a thunderstorm with rain and powers of well, uh, uh, wind forces of 140 miles to 190 miles an hour. I've seen trees pulled up by the root. I'm talking about old trees. Trees been around for a hundred years, pulled right up out of the root as if somebody pulled some weed out of the ground. I saw all kinds of destruction to people, automobiles and their homes. And there was a street that I went down and I told the children, I told Andre and Elena to come and walk with me. There were people who didn't have power that they were sitting on the roof of their house because there was no light. The wires were live, and they were trying their best to get people power back home. 
people from other states and other counties had to come in. What I'm trying to say today is that in everybody's life, there's going to be a tornado that's going to touch down. But what's important in that time they touch down is to remember whatever pain or destruction it brings. You need prayer and you need to be persistent in overcoming. Amen. Somebody look at somebody and say prayer, prayer. Pain, pain, and perseverance. And perseverance. In chapter 7, start in verses 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophet, better known to you and I as the golden rule. I saw that rule being applied this past week. Others helping others. It got so bad at Shaw University, which was right down the road, less than a mile from where we were staying at, that... The dormitory was almost destroyed from the wind gale, and they dismissed a whole semester of youth that was in college. And while we was eating at the buffet place, there was some young girls that was there saying, uh, I'm glad I'm from Georgia, and I'm glad to go back home so soon, but the place was so messed up, we had to stay in the gym. So I want you to know that everybody suffered to some degree. Here he says in verse 13, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that lead to destruction. Look to somebody and say, you don't want to be on the road of destruction. Because it leads to a dead end. Many there be which go there in that because straight. Everybody say, I want to get straight. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which lead into life, and few there be that find it. That don't mean you can't find it, it's just that folks today ain't looking for it. They figure they can live any kind of way they want, any kind of situation they can deal with and disregard what God is saying, and think that when they die one day, they're going to go right on to heaven. My job is not to preach you into heaven, and my job is not to condemn you to hell. But my broad job as a minister is to preach the gospel and get you on the straight and narrow. Somebody say amen. amen. The choice to find the straight and narrow is left up to you. Look at somebody and say the straight and narrow is left up to you. You can find it if you're looking for it. Verse 15 says, beware of false prophets. There's a whole lot of them today. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are raven wool. If they come in talking any other gospel than the gospel of Jesus Christ, be looking out. Be aware. If they come telling you bad, Trying to get you to do something bad. Be aware of the false prophets. If they come with no anointing, be aware of those preachers. They can talk a smooth talk, but what back of a preacher is his anointing? What back of a minister is his power that God gives him? Man can't give you this power. The good Lord saved me, and the good Lord gave me this power. Man didn't give me this power. But God gave me this power. You can sit there and act like you don't feel nothing, or you can act like you have the amen corner. Verse 16 says, You shall know them by their fruits. You'll know them by their fruits. For men gather grapes of thorns. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bring forth good fruit. Ha! Huh. But a corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. Amen. You'll know them by their fruit. Amen. If they come mean-spirited and hateful and they say they love the Lord, something wrong with that tree. Amen. Something wrong with that person. Amen? Amen. They need prayer. Because yes. sometimes people get a tornado in their life when it touch down. It causes so much pain they don't know how to get through the pain. Yes. 
But I'm here to tell you today, if you bear good fruit, you can get through the pain and you can persevere. But it's going to take prayer and it's going to take fasting and it's going to take calling on the Lord. Amen. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Either the tree that bring not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Verse 28 says, Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord. Watch out now. Somebody say, watch out now. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me, Jesus says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not preached in your name? Have we not uh, cast out devils in your name? Have we not done many wonderful works in your name? Oh, my God. And then Jesus said, I will profess unto them. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of lawlessness, workers of iniquity. Therefore, whosoever hear these words, if you hear these words today, and sayings of mine, and if you do them, I will liken him unto a wise man. Everybody say, I'm a wise man. Because I obey the word. He says, I will liken him to a wise man that built his house upon a rock. Jesus is that rock. When the rain come, when the tornado come, when the wind blow, when the water flow, when corruption shut up, when trouble come your way, when pain come your way, and when that hurricane blows hard, you better be in prayer. And you better be persistent. You can overcome this tornado. You can overcome this obstacle. You can overcome this situation. But you got to keep your hand in the master's hand. When they come, don't worry about how much wind is blowing. Don't worry about all the destruction. Just keep on trusting the Lord. Somebody tell somebody say, keep on trusting. Verse 25, the rain descended, the rain and the flood came, the wind blew, and it beat. There's going to be some tornadoes in your life, and the wind will blow, and the flood will rise, and there'll be time when you will lose faith, but you remember I can persevere. God brought me through the last trial. He can bring me through this. God brought me through my last tribulation. He can bring me through this. When everybody else is falling out, I'm going to stay persevere. When everybody else is trouble, I'm going to hold fast. Because God is going to answer my prayer. For he says, this house fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Look at somebody and say, I hope your house is built on the rock. Then you got those who don't have that rock. Everyone that hears the words and the sayings of mine, and you don't do what Jesus tell you to do, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended. And when the rain come, the flood will rise. And when the flood rise, the wind will blow. And it's going to beat. It's going to beat on that house. And that house, because it's on the sand, is going to have a fall. Many people were crying with tears in their eyes. They was having a real life experience. The tornado was weighing down heavy. It ain't nobody you can put your trust in. The governor can't help you. The mayor can't help you. 
the lawyers can't help you. Come on, somebody. The grocery store shut down. The banks had to close up. There was nobody to reach out to. But I'm here to tell you today, you can make it through your tornado. You can make it through your storm. You can make it through the rain. You can make it through the flood. You can make it through the hurricanes of your life. All you got to do is just keep on praying. Keep on going through your pain. One day you're going to come out of the pain. One day you're going to persevere. One day you're going to overcome. One day you can enjoy that fruit. One day you're going to give God the praise. One day you're going to glorify his name. One day you're going to clap your hands. One day you're going to shout. One day you're going to lift up holy hands. One day you're going to dance. One day you're going to sing. One day you're going to shout out loud. All that the Lord has done. You have to hold on. Even if the wind is blowing. You have to hold on. Even though the flood is rising. You have to hold on. Even though the creek has rise. And the ship haven't sailed. When you look all around you, everybody is falling to the left and falling to the right. But it should not come nigh thee because God's hand is on your life. I'm here to tell you as a witness today, though we were in the midst of the storm, God was right there with us. Although the wind was blowing, God kept us protected. Many was tragedy. Many lost their lives, but God was right there. Oh, my God. Look at somebody and say, God going to bring you out of your storm. All you got to do is pray, even though you might be in pain. But persevere. You see, many of you got storms in your life. Some of y'all got tornadoes in your life. When death comes, sometimes it's like a tornado. It catches you off in God. Sometimes when you're broke, busted, and disgusted, and you don't have no money to pay your bill, sometimes it feels like a tornado to hit your life. Sometimes when those on the job act up, it's like a tornado that come down your street. Oh, come on, somebody. Many times our children act up, and it seems like a tornado that hit your household. Well, come on, somebody. Many times your body goes through something and you get sickness on your flesh and it feels like a tornado that hits your life and there's destruction everywhere. But I'm here to tell you, regardless of the tornado that may be in your life, you can pray through what you're going through. You can persevere what you're going through. All you got to do is trust the Lord. Say, I trust the Lord. Oh, yes, I trust the Lord. Come what may, I trust the Lord. It doesn't matter what others are going through. I'm going to trust him anyhow. Oh, yes. He says, great was the fall of their house because it fell on the sand. And it came to pass when Jesus entered these sands. Huh, the people were astonished at his doctrine. They was amazed, for they taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe. When you're with Jesus, you can go through the storm. When you're with Jesus, you can go through the rain. When you're with Jesus, whatever you're dealing with today, God can satisfy your soul. Oh, somebody say, God has satisfied my soul. You have to put your hand together and give God the praise. Let me tell you about a woman that has some issues. Let me tell you about a woman that had a tornado in her life. 
She didn't think that she was going to get well as she was hemorrhaging each and every day. It ain't but so many pints of blood in our bodies that run through our veins. But this woman was bleeding every day. They couldn't stop the bleeding. She went to the doctor and the doctor did what he could. And there was no help from the doctor. In fact, the Bible said instead of she getting better, the Bible says she grew worse. You ever been to the doctor and the doctor couldn't help you no more? It might feel like there's a tornado that hit your life. It don't look like things gonna get better. But I'm here to tell you today, church, things is gonna get better because your trust ain't in man. Your trust is in the Lord. Put your trust in God and he'll help you through it all. This woman was sick in her body and she heard about a man by the name of Jesus. There was another man that Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. Jairus had a 12-year-old daughter. It's ironic how this woman had lived a life, didn't have any problems. But about 12 years ago, she had an issue of blood. This child that Jesus was going to see was about ready to die. Jairus was a well-known man of the town. Everybody loved him, and they loved his daughter. But his daughter got a sickness, and she needed a healing. But this woman also had a sickness, and she was bleeding to death. She didn't been everywhere. How many times you been places, and you wanted to get help, and there was no help for you? And it feel like your life got hit like a tornado. It felt like the wind was blowing just a little bit too hard. And you said to yourself, am I going to get through this? I don't have enough money to pay my bill. But God can open a way where there is no way. God can fix it for you if you give him a chance. You don't hear me talking right now. God can fix every situation that are going on in your life if you just give him a chance. If you just give him an opportunity to work miracles in your life. You can trust him even though you can't figure it out. This poor woman heard that Jesus was coming through the city. But Jesus was on a mission. He was on a mission for the Lord. For the glory of God on his way down to Jairus' house to lay his hand on Jairus' daughter. Jairus had pleaded with Jesus, please come on down to my house. I got a daughter, I love her, and she's about ready to die. Somebody say amen. amen. But when Jesus is around, you ain't got to worry about death because he done made death behave. But this woman, many of you know the story. This woman couldn't take it no more. You ever been in a position in your life where a tornado set down in your life and it blew things all out of proportion? It caused the flood to rise up in your life. It caused trouble everywhere around you. You wasn't sure if you were going to make it. This woman was getting tired. You ever been so sick and tired you were sick and tired? Oh, come on, somebody. You ever been so wore out you wasn't sure if you were going to make it? Sometimes you feel like somebody pulled you under a door and you're not sure if you're going to make it. But I'm here to tell you right now, by the anointing of God, this woman persevered through the crowd. Though she was in pain, she had prayed and prayed, but she persevered. Look at somebody and touch them by the hand. And so all you need to do is persevere. Look to somebody else and touch him and say, all you need to do is persevere. This woman with the issue of blood, her tornado had hit hard. She didn't know if she was going to recover. The doctor couldn't help her. The lawyer could not help her. 
Her friends could not help her. There was nobody around that could touch her about. She pressed through the crowd. She kept on going. She said, I have to get my hands on Jesus. I can't go no more. I know he's got the power. I know he got the power. If I can get to him, I don't need to talk to him. I don't need to speak to him. If I can reach out, you have to reach on out. Somebody ought to reach out. Come on and reach on out. And touch to him. The hem of his garment. If I have to preach it. If I have to sing it. If I have to talk through it. I'm going to get through it. I'm, I'm pressing my way this morning. I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. My mind is on Christ. Whatever I'm going through. I'm going to get through. I don't know what you're going through. When the tornado set down, it's going to set down in your life. What are you going to do? I'm going through. I'm going through this morning. Whatever it takes, I'm pressing my way. This woman had in her mind. Time is running out. I tried everything I know. I didn't knock on every door. I didn't talk to all my friends. My doctor can't help me no more. But there's one I know. He's a lily of the valley. He's a bright and morning star. He's a rose of Sharon. He's a Lord of Lords. He's King of Kings. He's a great I am. He's an Eastern Star. And he's a Lord of Law. He's a mighty God. A mighty counselor. The government shall be upon his shoulders. He will deliver you now. This woman passed through the crowd, pushing everybody aside. Sometimes you gotta break through when no one else wanna go but you. You gotta keep on going. Regardless of how hard time may be, you gotta persevere. Regardless of how much pain. You to say yes to the Lord when you reach out by faith. Say yes to the Lord. Say yes to the Lord. I just want to touch. I just want to touch the hem of his garment. And if I just touch the hem of his garment. I might have a tornado. It's gonna come to a stop. I might have some wind, but the wind is gonna stop. The flood might arise, but it's going back down. I'm claiming my healing right now. When I touch the hem of his garment, if you know the story, the woman got through. And when Jesus was walking, we find that the Peter said, Jesus said, somebody touch me. Somebody touch me. Don't you recognize church this morning? 
that when you touch Jesus by faith, he's going to be moved by your faith. And when this woman touched Jesus, immediately she received a healing in her body and she was made complete. And when Jesus was walking along, he said, somebody, somebody, come on church, help me out, somebody, somebody touch me when you learn to praise him and you learn to have a relationship when you learn to worship him and you do long delay if you learn to hold to his unchanging hand when you touch him in his garment you can be made whole he says somebody touch me and you can see the crowd all around Peter said you're crowded all around Lord everybody has got you blocked in on every side but Jesus broke out again he said somebody touch me when you touch the Lord you can tell the presence when you touch the Lord you will feel his anointing when you touch the Lord you can get your healing when you touch the Lord you can be delivered hey, hey. this woman reached out and touch everybody was touching Jesus but when you touch him in the right way, you're going to get his response. This woman received a healing. And we see that Jesus looked on the woman. You have to keep one thing in mind. This woman was sick and ready to die. But Jesus healed her in her body. And he said, woman, thy faith Look to somebody and say, your faith, your faith. My, faith my faith, is going to make us whole. Make us whole. Through, the prayer, through the prayer, through the pain, through the pain and, persevering, and persevering, we're going to have a victory. And while Jesus was there with that woman, one ran up to Jairus and said, don't trouble the master no more. You say, why not trouble him no more? Because your daughter is already dead. But they forgot who they were dealing with. Sometimes folks think that Jesus got his priority, priority mixed up. But whenever Jesus come in, he's right on time. He may seem like he's running late to you. It may seem like your tornado is blowing things out of proportion. It may seem like the wind is blowing your life in disarray. But when Jesus show up, the storm is going to stop. The wind is going to stop. The flood is going to cool down. The rain is going to stop. Because the master's on board. And we see that this young girl was laying there. Now this is the part that got to me. The Bible said that they said to Jesus, Don't, they ain't no use to trouble him no more. This child is dead. And Jesus said, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. Do you know the Bible said they laughed him to scorns? It's amazing how crying is so close to laughter. You ever heard people when they were laughing, it sounded like they were crying? You ever heard people when they was crying, it sounded like they were laughing? That's how close to the nerves and close the, 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 the emotions are to each other. And when Jesus said that she was sleeping, they were supposed to be professional moaners, 
and they supposed to have been crying for the loss of Jairus' daughter, but they laughed in the scorn. You see, a tornado had touched down in Jairus' household. And when you're going through something, there will be folks that will laugh at you. Well, oh, come on, somebody. There will be folks that will pick at you and make fun at your family. But I'm here to tell you, through the pain, you can pray. Through the pain, you can persevere. Even if the tornado set down, you can still have the victory. Don't worry about what others may be thinking about you. Because you can't change what they think anyhow. But you can hold on to your faith. You can hold on to God's unchanging hand. God will take you through what you're going through. The Bible said that Jesus looked at the crowd that was laughing at him. The Bible said he put them all out. He can't work with doubt and unbelief. He took John, James, and Peter, Jairus, and his mother, or his wife. And when they went in, the Bible said the child was laying there. And Jesus took her by the hand. And he spoke to the child that was 12 years old. I say unto thee, arise. And the power that the woman with the issue of blood felt. It's the same power that the 12 year old felt. It's the same power that you feel right now. It's the same anointing that you feel right now. You don't have to say amen. You don't have to say praise the Lord. I feel the power. You feel the power. I feel the anointing. You feel the anointing. Now, if you don't feel nothing, it's because you're quenching the spirit. You don't want to feel it because you think something's going to happen to you. I'm hoping you do feel something. So you can start shouting. You're not going to ever be the same. When you stop and think what tornado God brought you through. How many have had some tornadoes in their life? Well, come on, somebody. I'm talking about some spiritual tornadoes. When your emotions are not right, you can have a spiritual tornado. When your mind snap and it looks like you're going to lose your mind, that's a tornado happening in your life. When you done lost a loved one and you're going through some grief and you say, Lord, why? It might feel like a tornado. But if you keep on praying through the pain, hallelujah, if you keep on persevering through the pain, God will see you through it all. You're not going through by yourself. Jesus was on a healing campaign. He healed a woman with the issue of blood. He healed Jairus' daughter. But he also raised her from the dead. You see, when Jesus came and died for you and me, and after he died and rose, there touched down a tornado in Jerusalem. I don't mean a physical tornado, but I'm talking about a spiritual tornado. When the disciples and those who were following him couldn't quite believe that he had died and rose again. Many went disarrayed and even people today won't believe or accept the fact that he died and rose again. But Jesus is alive. I know he's alive. Tell somebody about it and say, I know, I know 
Come on, don't look at me. Touch him by the hand. I don't care if they've been sitting here and they pay attention. Touch him and say, excuse me, I know that he's alive. Ask me how I know. Because he lives within me. Come on, somebody, give him the praise. It was that day, the day they had him on that cross. He looked around on the crowd, and there were thousands that were standing there. 33 and a half years. They've been trying to kill this man. But now, the enemy think he got him whooped. But he don't know this ain't the end. This is the beginning. And he came into this world to die for you and me. And when others abandoned or gave up, when others didn't want to recognize the trouble they had in their life. When others are going through and they didn't think they was going to make it. Jesus looked on the crowd and he said, it is finished. Come on, somebody. Woman, behold thy son. Hallelujah. When he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders, looked up to heaven and said, Father, Father, forgive them. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. But he took on a baby's body, and he came into a world of sin. He wrapped himself in flesh, and then he lived a life of 30 years old. And three and a half years, at 33 and a half, he was willing to sacrifice his life. And there he was on the cross for you and me. And now he's ready to die. And who did he do it for? Somebody say, he did it for me. Close your eyes. Bow your heads. You see, you got to put this in your mind. He was on the cross. You could see that cross. And there he was, dying and hanging between heaven and earth for you and me. The Bible said he was numbered with the male factors. He was numbered with the cripples. Though he himself was without sin, he died for you and me. Many didn't know that there was those that were around and the blood that was gushing out of his wounds. The acacia thorns that was pushed upon his head. His back was whooped and beat. 39 strikes saved. 40 strikes saved one. You can see the tears running down his face. Mixed with blood and he was in anguish and pain, and, and it seemed like a tornado had hit Jerusalem. Souls was in disarray. People were wondering, what did they do to my Lord and your Lord? They hung there, dying for your sins and mine. You don't have to say amen. I'm going to say amen for you. He bled and he died. While he was there, he thought about you and he thought about me. He thought about April the 24th, 2011. It's a day that you didn't see until today. But he saw it long before you did. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Can you say, Lord, I'm ready for your presence. I thank you for dying for my sins and for rising again with newness of life 
I claim my blessings. I claim my deliverance. I claim sanctification. I thank you for your holiness. And I thank you for your righteousness. I thank you, Lord, for all you have done. Thank you, Lord. So when the tornado showed up, Lord, I have to worry about the wind. I don't have to worry about the rain. I don't have to worry about the flood. Because my trust is in you, Lord. So come with me. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to hold to scriptures until I get through what I'm going through. As he lay there on that cross, there for you and me, a hurricane touched down, and the disciples and all the women and all of them were gathered together, and they were worried what will become of this boy, what will become of this man, what will become. The Bible says in three days he was in the heart of the earth. And that first day of the week, that Easter Sunday, there Mary Magdalene ran to the tomb. When she got there, the stone was rolled away. My, my, my. That's the angel said, why seek the living among the dead? He is not here, for he has risen. What did you do with my master? And while Mary was talking to a man, that she thought it was a gardener, he said, Mary, oh Mary, you can see tears running down her eyes. Just like when you're going through your tornado, there are tears that will run down your eyes. And the taste of tears may be salty and bittersweet. But God said, I'll never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. He said, I'm with you, even to the end of the age. Uh, this is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.